Hi, it's Deborah, and it's the new normal. I'm a little bit late today because I just came off a call and I looked so bad I needed to put makeup on. I'm a feminist, but I've forgotten how to put makeup on. I used to be able to do it in the backs of cabs with one hand. I was My liquid eyeliner game was amazing. I just so rarely do it all now, and it's making me sad. I'm just going to do it every day because it's making me sad. And I've just run a brush to my hair, which looks so much better than it did on my Zoom calls. I am exhausted. How are you, Friday afternoon? Boom. There you go. You're Friday afternoon. Um, delighted to have you all on the new normal. Um, this is how we make television now. It's the same here or on BBC One. It's just how people do it. It's just people in rooms talking to other people in rooms on uh, webcams. That's, the, that's all that's on offer for you for entertainment for the rest of your lives. Let's see if Sophie Duke is there. She is not. Uh, let me see. Um, let me see. Let's see if she's there now. No, she's not. Uh, I have paused the app because I wanted to get Sophie Duker on. Let's see. She's still not there, but I feel confident that she will be there. Um, let's see. Now, in the meantime, I can tell you all about my shirt. So my shirt says free, safe, legal, local. And it is about um, the free, safe, legal, local campaign in collaboration with Alliance for Choice. Um, so these guys are looking at the Alliance for Choice that uh, and looking at saying abortion should be free, it should be safe, it should be legal and it should be local. People, and women from Northern Ireland shouldn't have to travel uh, here for some things that we have now during the lockdown they don't have uh, women in Poland as well um, are really really struggling at the moment because the Polish government is using the uh, lockdown as an excuse to say well we can pass this while you can't protest um, so get on board with our free safe legal local and shadow see here and do this is their amazing latest magazine um, so Google them and get involved. All right, I'm going to bring Sophie Duker on. Here she is in five, four, three. And Sophie Duker. I feel almost certain that she's going to pop up at any second now. And I'm going to ask her the questions. Five, four, three. And she's not coming on. Where are you, Sophie Duker? Hey, love from the Girls Feminist in Glasgow. Hello. Someone here saying so upset about the abortion thing right now. Yeah, me too. Oh, it's tough times. But it does it 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 does mean that feminism is still needed in lockdown. I've been thinking a lot about feminism and uh how feminism is really a grasp for control. A control over our own bodies, uh control over representation, control over uh legislation that affects women and people of minority genders and how now we've lost control over even how many times a day we can leave the house or whether we can get bread uh hold on going live again let's give it another try let's see so that we need to find ways we can demonstrate we still have some control over our world and the wider world yeah here she is <laughs> it's sophie joker everybody <laughs> How are you, my darling? I'm very well. I was like, how do I get in? It's like an escape room, except... Yeah, I mean, it's so like an escape room. room. Our whole world is an escape room at the moment, though, and it turns out there are no exits. No. And it doesn't matter if you solve the riddles, you're not getting out of your escape room. Uh, maybe the whole quarantine, that's just one big escape room, and it's just like in six months' time. Don't say six months, Deborah. Say six oh, weeks. Don't, why do you say six months? I didn't, it just came out. No one... <laughs> it's a fear. It's a fear that came out. I'm so sorry. I've depressed oh. you on a Friday afternoon. I can't, I've no excuse. I meant six weeks. Might not be six weeks. Might be three weeks. It, yeah, it could be. You never know. You don't know, but you do know it's not going to be one week. Yes. So, how the hell are you, Sophie Duker? I think I'm coping. I got. Yes. I drank some alcohol last night. I'm oh. Drinking a lot. Um. Right I, now I'm having I've a never. Tea. Oh, fair, so there you go with your herbal tea. I've never been much of a drinker, but I've been saying on the show, I used to be quite smug about how I was like, we just don't really drink in the week. And now I'm like, what time is it? When can I have a vodka soda? 
I, and I, I don't drink a lot, but I'll, I, I would happily have two vodka sodas in one evening now at home on a school night, happily. Wouldn't that even is think pretty wild. That is so me, I, that is. That is. <laughs> I'm a crazy wild child. Do you, have you, have you not seen my t-shirt? Two, how many, doubles or singles? That is, that is a crazy wild child t-shirt. I don't, I'm not very good at the measures. I just pour in a bit. Okay. But sometimes right. it depends on how steady my hand is, how, how I'm being feeling. How, how many vodka sodas you've already had. <laughs> exactly. And so, you know, when I say I've had two vodka sodas, I do mean a 50-50 split between the vodka and the soda. Oh yeah, it's a, it's a one-to-one -one ratio, vodka. <laughs> um, I had a <sighs> gin and tonic the other day, but it was not, it was not my choice. <laughs> it was not what uh, I wanted for myself. It, <laughs> a gin and tonic? Why was it not what you wanted? That sounds very elegant. I mean, it was, it was, it was absolutely what I wanted. My flatmate just made it. And I was like, time's a construct. And this, this is fancy gin. It was nice gin. Mm, time's a construct and gin is fancy. Gin is here. Yeah. Gin, is, gin is in my glass, in my hand. I yeah. mean, we need something right now, I tell you that. But drugs, apparently, we were talking about this the other day, lower your immunity. So we should not, this isn't a good time to just get into your secret stash of MDMA. I'm not implying that you have one, Sophie Duca, but if I don't, you it's did. Very, it's publicly available. Um, if I you think... did, don't go, don't, don't, don't lower your immunity is the recommendation. Sophie? Yeah, okay. I feel like this is an intervention. You've no, sorry, I meant so, oh, Sophie, because you were about to say something. This is, it's a live streamed intervention. It's how we do it now. It's oh, just, God. I've been sent by the other comedians to say, S stop. 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 Um, I, think, I think it would be bad if you are someone that partakes in illegal drugs. It's not a particularly good time because it's, all drugs can go wrong and it's not a good time to put extra strain on people who'd be trying to help you in that situation. But... Uh, someone who isn't me has a marijuana dealer in the very fancy area of London, which I'm in. Uh, and they've been very professional about uh, sending out a little menu uh, in anticipation of lockdown, asking if anyone wants any deliveries. It's basically like a cardo, but for weed. What? Um, it's, wow. Yeah. A cardo. A car. Oh, that is a double fisted chef's kiss. Apart I just, you know what? I just went for the jump, like I'm, a, like I was a, a sort of expert. I thought, just go for it. Open your mouth. Be curious as to what comes out. It will happen. And there it was, <laughs> sitting there for me, a car dope. In fact, that could be your T-shirt because no, but you couldn't be because it's, that's because you didn't say it. Um, every day, you don't know this, but every unless you watch it, every day, uh, Hannah from the merch store finds something funny the guest has said that could make a good T-shirt. Then it, that she makes a stay-at-home T-shirt with your name, the new normal, and what you've said on it, and uh, the the they are they're print on demand. So there's no waste, and the profit goes to you because you're an artist who can't currently gig. So already, I've seen a candidate in Times of Construct and the Gin is Fancy. <laughs> I mean, Times of Construct, Gin is Fancy, O C A D O, Acado, Acado. <laughs> A card dope. A card I don't know dope. how a card dope is going to feel about the bastardization, but look, unless they're happy to sponsor us, we might just go to town. Have you had any extra new fancy I'm a feminist butts lately because of the lockdown? I mean, this is something I'm actually quite ashamed of um, because I love her. I think she's absolutely amazing. Um, I'm a feminist, but I was feeling really glum while watching lots of YouTube videos and I screenshotted a picture of Joy Crooks where she looks like her face is melting. She's doing like wow. a sort of sexy, like, but she's got it at the sort of the, just the wrong angle. So it and like you a, screenshot it? What, just out of, just... It, uh, it's, uh, just it's on my desktop. <laughs> oh my God. You know, she came on The Guilty Feminist. She sang I Will Survive. Yeah, oh and, on the South God. Bank. Yeah. She's she, so cool. I saw her at Latitude. I've never heard a voice like hers in real life. It was be mesmerizing it's, it's i'll tell you it's coming out soon because it's our 200th episode tom when's it coming out he's cooking dinner but he's got his headphones and he can't hear me ah uh, there he is look we'll turn the camera around so you can see him yay tom what song he doesn't know he doesn't know he's being live streamed is this unethical he doesn't know there you go i mean tom but that's a very sexy shot hey you're you're on you're on television tom um when does the 200th episode come out um, uh, two weeks on Monday. Two weeks on Monday. Joy Crooks. Love, 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 love. I'm yeah. turning the background. Oh, uh, my own Jamie Oliver over there. 
That's um, you're living domestic bliss. You've just got a man who sort of turns around. It's like the it's like <laughs> shot as well. It's just sort of like <laughs> it was. I mean, also he's wearing a shirt, which yeah. is nuts. It's what he does. That's how he dresses. He's cooking. He's in jeans and he's in a butt. He's in a shirt with cufflinks. He wears cufflinks every day of the lockdown. Every day of the lockdown, he wears cufflinks. Um, and he's he's. What are you cooking tonight, Tom? It's like a chicken tray bake. He's cooking a tray bake. He said. Um, oh. He's he's oh. a very good cook and he cooks from scratch. Um, he will probably make me a cocktail while I'm on this call because he knows it's Friday night. And he'll probably make it for me like a vodka soda with a dash of cranberry and a martini glass, I imagine. Mm. I think that's going to be delivered Wait. to me any time in the next five minutes. That's I what I'm guessing. Yeah. At first I thought you were anticipating this, but then I realised you were dropping loud hints as to what you wanted. <laughs> I mean, a little bit. I was like, I mean, he is the greatest partner anyone could ever want. He's the greatest husband anyone could ever want. And the, the, he'll, what he'll probably do is put the right amount of ice into the martini glass just to like just to make it really lovely and cold. That's what I think. Because normally, this, this, you don't know this, Sophie, even as you watch it, but this show is sponsored by Diet Coke. Oh, I do know that. Diet Coke don't know that. But what I'm hoping is if I, every single time I go, this is, this is yesterday's can. That's like, look, Tom has cleaned everything, but somehow he missed yesterday's can. I haven't cleaned anything. Um, if I go, Diet Coke, sponsored by Diet Coke, I'm hoping that as a joke, they'll give me 10,000 pounds. Because it would be great PR for them to sponsor a feminist show. Because most feminists are fueled by Diet Coke. Oh yeah, DC and ten grand for them is what? Nothing. It's it's child's play. It's chump change. It's a penny. Peanuts. Pennies, not for it's the Coke. A, it's, it's a penny. It's <laughs> less than a penny. A Coke factory. <laughs> so if they sponsored us, they would get so much good press. They would get hundreds of thousands of pounds of great press probably millions for 10,000 pounds. So if you're watching Diet Coke and you must be my now because someone must have told you, then you're a fool to yourself if you do not sponsor the new normal, Just the new Diet Coke break. You giving the hard sell to a faceless Diet Coke employee is they're like, why does she keep <laughs> mentioning us? What's going on? <laughs> Oh, I love that. I uh, Friday afternoons in lockdown. I'll see. I become a different person. It's like I'm high. I need to assure you, Sophie. I'm not. I, I believe you. I can't. <laughs> I. I. I, be, I mean, I'd be. I'd be. You. This is, seems like a perfect Friday afternoon position. I wish I was being made. Actually, my flatmate. I have. A, I have a sort of Tom. My flatmate made me some noodles, which were delicious. That's nice. That's lovely. That's we're lovely. We're each other out. Our, our love language is food. Are you? Is your partner not locked down with you? No, my partner is not locked down with me, which is very quite hard. Um, it's because of some sad family stuff. Oh, uh, yeah. So he's I'm in. So sorry. He's in another town. I was oh. with him for the first week of lockdown, but then I had to come back for a job, and that, and then we we were seeing what happened, and what's happened is more lockdown. So it's a lot of it's so good you have a flatmate who makes you noodles in that case yeah you, you deserve <laughs> that <laughs> and then you're just weeping into the phone you absolutely deserve that speaking of which um thank you very much darling oh Cheers. my god mm. that looks incredible well you did hear me order it very carefully yeah you were very specific yeah. how many cubes it, are in there is that um, a specific number or just the right amount it's um, six large cubes and two small cubes. And he has, he's, he's curated it. It's a, it's a curated drink. Look, that's, that's not, there's nothing haphazard about that drink. Everything. It's a curated drink. <laughs> Tom <laughs> Slinsky. He's, Everything about that drink is intentional. He's a truly, truly amazing man. Mm. Lovely. Lovely. Mm. So do you have any new I'm a feminist bar? So I can't remember, did you say? Um, I'm, oh wait, so I'm a feminist, but I screenshotted an unflattering oh, yes. picture of Joy Crooks. I have you, another one. Yes, go on. I've started sending lots of nudes, but I think that is a very feminist thing. I've started <laughs> sending and receiving. <laughs> go on. Um, I'm really bad at sending nudes, or I was. Like, I was really, really bad at sending nudes. Lax. Lax at sending nudes. Lax. You were not. You were not doing, you were not carrying your weight in the new no, sending department. I just, okay, so my, I have a really bad phone. I'm doing this on a different phone from the one I use. This is an iPhone Pi, um, and it's got a really bad camera. Every time I take a picture of myself, it looks like a cave painting. Um, I don't really know what to do with my face. 
um, it's just like this is a terrible picture. But I got. Have you thought of modelling yourself on the joy on the joy crooks unflattering still? Yeah, I'm just sort of like is this. She's there? such a beautiful woman. She is an, an incredible... If Joy Crooks, if you're watching, you're an incredibly beautiful woman. Oh, so could yeah. you, because only done this because it was amusing? Oh, no, it was just like, I was like, oh, it, yeah, it was kind of amusing because it was kind of silly, but I was also, I'd never seen her look anything less than perfect. Right. I fell in love with her at, at Latitude last year. And I was like, I think just the very side emotional bit about Joy Crooks, I felt like when she's singing like about London and stuff, it's like the same sort of feeling that I had about Amy Winehouse. I don't know why I'm on first name terms. It's because she used to live in High Barnet and I used to live there. She went there to, yeah. Well, I anyway, live in Camden but... and Amy was a Camden girl. So I should also be on first name terms. How much does Joy Crooks' voice remind you of Amy Winehouse, but also not she's her own person. We shouldn't compare women. Oh yeah, but it's that kind of like nostalgia for a place. I mean, we, we both still live in London. That kind of like embodying the spirit of what young yeah. people feel like there now that song London Line is like mm, perfect so good um I can't wait to hear the episode she's on um did you do your other run feminist bar I'm a feminist but I've started taking and set, sending and taking loads of nudes oh yes 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 and you're now sending them you did we didn't get to the end of that we went back to crooks yes um I'm sending I'm sending nudes you haven't sent any to me myself huh you haven't sent any to me I'm sorry I will I'm actually potentially going to tag you in a, in a nude meme. I just wanted to what? wait until we chatted. <laughs> because I also, I know that people want to... <laughs> okay, that sounded weird. I was going to say, I know people want to see your nudes, Zebs. Which sounded like I was a... Do they? I think... Yes. I, if you... Come on, people. I'm not I... sure they do. I'm not sure they do as much as you think they do. I'm sure they oh. want to see your nudes. Do you want to see my nudes? Please tell me now, audience. Yes Please or no? Please tell Deborah. Th thumbs up if you do, and I really will not be offended if you say no. I will understand okay, entirely, got... and I will not cry myself to sleep. We've oh, there's a thumbs first, up. Yes. There you go. I mean, people are, to be fair, very bored. So I don't, you know, I don't take this as the compliment that I could do people in a busier time. People <laughs> are ecstatic about this. You need, you need another vodka soda. It's okay. So I've got, I've got a theory of nudes. I've done a lot of I've done a lot of research into nudes. Yeah. Um, I've got to hear about what is a nude because obviously we don't, we don't want to see like re pornographic pictures of you because that would be inappropriate. But we want to see like an empowering, beautiful, erotic, empowering, erotic and intentionally erotic. So like for, that you follow the nip rule for a good nude. Yeah, what's good the nip nude, rule? Nip rule N I P. You've got to have naughtiness. It's got to be you've got to be seeing something you didn't mean to see, whether it's like a little bit of collarbone. And little yeah, little happy boob. to do collarbone. Oh, happy to do collarbone. No, no, and a little the... light breastage. A little light breast or like maybe some, some Selinsky, a Selinsky classic from the... Oh, behind. Board. Um, it's got to have intrigue. It's okay. got to elevate something that elevates above the like, just like... It's not your so what you're not yourself. revealing as much as what you are revealing, what we're intrigued to see more of. Yeah, yes. or maybe like a bit of humour or a bit of, you know, a bit of con conceptual stuff. Okay. Uh, and then P, what's P? Oh yeah, pose. Because it's not an accident. You've got it. It's kind of like I meant to do this. Even if your pose is like carefree, it's still right. I made this picture. Okay, all right. So, so do I need to do this for a calendar, or someone has just said uh, I need to pose for a calendar? Um, you... <laughs> oh no. The thing Sorry, is, I, I think... just feel it's you're coming at this with an incredibly unfair advantage. If you say we both have to submit a nude, I just feel like you have a very, not, I'm not dismissing, I like my body, I'm not dismissing my own body, but I do feel there is an elegance to you that I feel, you know, if I were you, I would also be saying we all have to do nudes is what I'm saying. You'll I notice. What, I, see, I see what you mean. I mean, I think, I, I started, I was trying not to be self-deprecating because the first time I was like, I, when I started talking about nudes, when I realized I was obsessed with them, I said I look like a cross between Peter Pan and Kunta Kinte. Wow. And then, <laughs> yeah. and then I said I had a very Lisa Simpson-esque vibe going on. Oh, you do have a Lisa to. Simpson. Do uh, we want to see nude Lisa Simpson? I think that's a good question. For the... Oh, there are lots of websites where you can do that already. <laughs> no, no, she's a child. She's a perpetual child. She is a child. She is a child. She's they a... do adult Lisa. It's not, yeah. it's not child Lisa. To be fair, she's like a 35-year-old child or whatever. How did how long the symptoms are making that out? Um, but she is still, she's, she's still, still a child. 
Oh yeah, but we've, we've seen glimpses of teen, well not teen Lisa. That's Adam. right, we have seen Grown Up Future Lisa. Listen, Grown Up Future Lisa, knock yourself out gang. Do all your fanfic. I, I've no judgments for you, but just leave child Lisa to leave enjoy her, enjoy her 12 decades of innocence. Um, <laughs> have you found any coping strategies for, to be mentally and emotionally stable? Anything you can share with us? And, the, and, it, and it's a perfect acceptable to say, no, I haven't. No, I haven't. I fall apart daily. That's all right too. Or I don't eat them. I'm great at this. That's all fine too. I think I, I feel like I'm very much a doer. So I'm like, when it's not undistracted, I'm like, what if I birthed another avocado plant? Or, you know, right. reading actual texts. Um, I love, oh God. So this is why, this is why I switched up and did the news thing. Because I find running really good. But mm. I don't like being, I hate races. I hate being competitive about it. I hate knowing how much I've run. I just like moving through space. Um, that's, and that's weird for me because you run a, a comedy show called Wacky Racists. Yeah. Which implies to me wacky races. Obviously, that's the that's the that's the joke. Mm -hmm. So I see you a little bit as a Penelope pit stop. So yes. when you say you don't like races, that to me is a know, but is a is a thinker. Continue. I I do idolise Penelope pit stop. I think she's very much an icon. Um, mm. And her car, what was it called? The compact pussycat, which is the only <laughs> car, the only okay. car I would fuck. Um, but it's got lips. Disgust. Are you saying you'd turn Kit down? If Kit were the last car on earth, you wouldn't fuck Kit. Who's Kit? You don't know Kit? From Knight Rider, before oh. your time. There was a television show in the 80s okay. where there was a car, a man and a car, and the man drove the car. Tom, who was in Knight Rider other than the car? And this car, it was a sexy car? It was a talking car, like in Who Framed Roger Rabbit? Yeah. It, yeah, it, it was his, the car was his partner and the, he, the car could talk to him. And Tom, who was in Knight Rider? David Hasselhoff. David Hasselhoff. Oh, and yes. Kit, who was the voice of Kit? Ooh. Oh, it's very rare. St. Elsewhere. The guy from St. Elsewhere. That's a, it's very rare. Tom doesn't know a name. Um, people are saying David Hasselhoff in droves here. And so I'm just saying, Kit was a very sexy voiced car. Um, I'm saying in a squeeze, if you and Kit were stuck on a desert island together and there was no one else to have sex with, I think you'd go for it. All right, All right. I'm, I'm open to but new things. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry if I keep... I think I... I'm not sure how smutty I'm allowed to be. I think I'm dragging the tone down somewhat. Um... You can be as smutty as you like. Okay. We are broadcasting on Her Majesty's internet. And that is a place that is terrifying at all times. Nothing we say could be as bad as what's on the internet already. Nothing. Um, okay, so, so you're, so you're, so you've, you've, you, you're, uh, you're running, you're birthing I'm avocados. Running. I'm, I'm running, I'm birthing avocados. Something has been suggested to me as a coping strategy, but I have not yet dipped my toes into is audio porn, which is why the sexy voiced car that people have been mentioning in the comments I was like, so my friend told me that she's been listening. Ooh. Sorry, Tom's just, Tom <gasps> just wants to show you what he's cooking. This is actual porn. What's in there? Oh my God. It's a chicken tray bake, which will, I'm, I am, I de I'm deeply sorry to vegans who've just seen something they did not want to see. Um, I am generally pesky, pesky, low dairy, but I may have at times in lockdown caved for chicken. I'm still not eating any red meat and I know that vegans are not going to care about it. I mean, they are, but some, some will, some more than others. Sorry, Sophie. That was just a little bit of a pop in from Jamie Oliver. We'd like this to be a cooking program as much as anything else in case, in case our sponsors, Diet Coke, who've given us very kindly and generously 10,000 pounds. They haven't yet, but they will do. Uh, like that kind of thing. We don't know. We don't know what they like. They've not been in touch. Guilty at guiltyfemist at gmail.com. Message us with offers of 10,000 pounds Diet Coke. Um, continue, Sophie. I'm so I'm, sorry. It's not normally like this. This is a real Friday episode. No, I'm lo I'm loving the Friday vibes. I'm loving it. Um, <laughs> you, you sh McDonald's. Do oh, you have ten thousand pounds for Sophie Duca? She's just said she's the, loving it. What's the Coke thing? Always the real thing? No. Oh yeah. What's the thing? I think of Diet Coke break. Diet oh, Coke Diet break. Da -na 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 -na. You know when all the all the all the women in the office look at the man who's cleaning the windows or whatever. He's got his shirt off. Oh. I would absolutely recreate. I'm a feminist, but I would recreate the Diet Coke ad like that on I mean, you've, Zoom. You've got all the tools. You've got Selinsky at the window. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine Selinsky being the man in the Diet Coke ad. That's what I'm doing. I think it'd be great that he'd need a tray bait. 
Uh, I don't think I don't uh, think without the tray bake. Sorry, it would you're work. I suppose actually he could be a modern diet coke man who's doing he's bringing cocktails and doing tray bakes. I mean that is sort of modern man. Yeah, that's yeah. that's actually a good idea. Sorry, Sophie. What were you saying? I'm about... so sorry for the McDonald's faux pas. I don't want them to sponsor me. Um, <laughs> they've this. closed down now, so they're not going to. They've, yes. they've shut their they've shut their doors. Continue. Um, so I went for uh, a walk. I was speaking to my friend on the phone, and she said she got an into audio porn, um, which is I have not dipped into, but apparently there's lots of different things. There's some stories where you are in the story, some stories where you're being told the story, lots of different voices, but she says she's really attracted to people's voices now. So as a step up from the audio book, um, the audio... Audio erotica. Oink. So it's what te telling you a sexy story. Yeah, I think, so. I mean, some of it, I think is literally you overhearing something, which I think must be very embarrassing to record because either it's some actors or it's just a Foley artist going like... <laughs> Um, but some of it. we could record some of this in lockdown because the guilty feminists could bring out our own feminist audio porn i'd be into that oh yeah uh, it's just like a fe a like oh just like a, like a lovely a lovely feminist is making you a tray bake with a shirt off um, yeah that'd be um, good and in he walked with his tray bake in one hand and his penis in the other yeah <laughs> they both weighed exactly the same Tom just said that doesn't seem safe. He's <laughs> always mean, thinking of health and safety. <laughs> There's a risk of splatter. Um, oh, God, in more ways than one. Anyway. He, people are doing... A friend of mine, Jess Regan, who's done the podcast before and does our big speeches workshops, I rang her the other day, I FaceTimed her, and she was in her wardrobe. And I was like, oh, wow, it's that part of lockdown, you know, don't let the bastards drive you, drive, grind you down, you're in your wardrobe. But what it was, the reason she was in a wardrobe is she'd soundproofed it with, like soft stuff because she was recording audiobooks and that was the best place to record it was in her wardrobe oh that's mm. i really like that's very narnia although this is the worst time to come back to, to go to go and live a life full life in narnia because you come back and you'd still be in lockdown in no time oh um, yes yes you're better off getting the delorean another car that i would definitely do mm. in a crisis um and uh then you could come back any time but the thing is we don't know because the DeLorean only ever went as far as 2018 so we don't know what what would happen in if we if they came back in 2021 we don't know where we'll be yeah we hopefully don't. not still in the wardrobe making yeah, sex think... noises for audio erotica <laughs> <laughs> don't knock oh! it until you've tried it um oh! but i think some are just sexy stories you know some are just I think some are like romances. They're very good, apparently, with different genders. So they have like he, she, 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 he, they. Um, there's a lot of, I think it's quite nice. diverse, which I think normal porn is as well. I don't watch normal porn anymore, but um, it's a lot harder to find something that's not terribly problematic. So, yes, uh, I, think, um, I, think, I think that sounds great. And if you have any link to it, we'll make a story afterwards because anything you recommend, we'll make a story of if you, if, you, if you have any links. Are you surprised by anything, Sophie? The way you've responded, like, or the way the world has responded to this crisis? Has anything thrown you for a loop? I'm surprised how tired I am. Um, oh. I'm also surprised how routined I am now. I was never a routine person. And now I'm like, every single day, I start my Zoom personal training at exactly the same time. And like, I'm, I do this show at exactly the same time. And I have things that I do and I need to do because I don't have control over anything else. At least I have, at least I can take charge of that. Um, is there anything you've surprised yourself with? Mm. Or you think, oh, isn't it surprising that people have done this or governments have done that? I think when I saw that Justin Trudeau was like, I mean, this isn't that maybe not surprising for Justin Trudeau, but, but the first, I mean, we've all seen in like very real ways how it affects very so, people. What? I'm so sorry. No, I've now just imagined in my head that Justin Trudeau's just done one of those briefing speeches that world leaders had to do, but he did it blacked up. Um, <laughs> I thought like people get to say, I was just really surprised that Justin Trudeau went for the blacking up. The, I mean, when it's old pictures of him in college, it's bad enough, but he shouldn't yeah. have done it for the briefing speech. He was just Not like, every week. You know what? This is everything. <laughs> no one's going to buy it. Um, he's, he was, at least at the start of lockdown, he was just, I think he was without his partner and with all the kids. 
and his daughter was helping him with the social media and he was sort of being on like hands on dad from his home doing little briefings and I was like this has really affected you I think it's I think it's interesting seeing how everyone's had to, not had to have a reaction because I think very in a very valid way some people are just like I can't really engage with the outside world or my fans or whatever and I think that's fine but it's happening to everyone it's weird when something happens to say like a group of people that you really care about or some people in your life or to you if there's not the same sense that everyone is going through something and so sometimes I'm like how does Joy Crooks feel about this she's just sitting in a room like <laughs> she's just sitting in a room being incredibly beautiful writing some new song oh. a new quarantined song called locked inside my heart probably oh god I probably probably um speaking of which is there any music or books or tv shows you've discovered while in quarantine that's keeping you going yes seeing you through what I'm you got i am very late but um I'm watching the finale of Sex Education tonight. Oh! Absolutely delighted. I haven't um, done the latest series. Is it good? It is really good. And I, it took me a while to get into it. But uh, this series, there's some fun faces on it. There's a bit of Sindhu V. Um, nice. There's, uh, it just, I think it just goes real up, like this series. I was just like, I don't know. It's about children who are... I, when I was 16, I wasn't having sex all over the place. So I'm just intimidated by these really? stunning... 20 something year old actors playing 16 year olds having sex um but i'm really excited that's a great series i finished girl woman other and immediately burst into tears oh did oh, you yes i don't know i mean it, i think it was not necessarily particularly sad but it had been a real journey it was like mm. Whoa. um my sister the serial killer i've got a book right next to me Ooh. Brat. It's called Brat. It's a comic. But it's oh. a I don't know oh. if I'm allowed to. Yes, we'll make a story of that. In fact, my next question, is there anything in the house you'd like to show us? But tell us about Brat first. Um, Brat is a comic book and it's about a sort of like radical performance artist. It's this woman, um, which is very rare for comic books, um, who has a fully fleshed out character. But she does stuff like she's giving like a press conference and she's bored by the question. So she sorts of pisses on the seat. I haven't read all of it yet. But it's kind of like weird, quirky drawings. Um, she's kind of like past her heyday. So she was like a young radical artist. And now she's kind of like, oh, I don't know if I'm too old for this. Um, but still very cool. And yeah, I'm excited to see what happens to her. I'm excited. OK, so we'll make a story of Brat. That looks really great. Is there anything you could show us in your house? Any pets or costumes, headdresses, oh. glamorous anything? I mean, I've got, I've got this. Oh, wow. That's yeah. so cute. Thank you. Why is it sitting just there? Um, <laughs> I weirdly do like to use it as a prop when I'm doing video calls. I was also demonstrating reverse cowgirl in a, in a video call. Just Were like, you? <laughs> so you thought you'd pop it on? I thought I'd pop it on, to illustrate it. Prop, yeah. Um, oh, I've got something that matches it, which um, it's, a bit, it's a bit rude. I don't know. Show me. It's what is that? It's it's a pic. I, I would say that it's my my vulva. Yes. Which is allowed under the Instagram guidelines. But yes. I to my partner and they were like, "That's not yours." Oh and really? I, I had to admit that I'd copied it off the template on the internet, and it isn't actually mine. It's although it's got curly hair. But it is not, not your. It, it's not my vulva. It's not my vulva. That could be a candidate for Hannah to make a T-shirt for you. It's not my vulva. Not my vulva. Not without my vulva. <laughs> Thank you for showing us those things. I'm really happy to, I saw them. Have you got a dark moment or low moment or a, a, that you could share with us? We, we ask this every day because it really helps people because there are, people are only seeing other people live streaming a line dance and uh, you know the, 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 the 4,000 piece jigsaw puzzle they've just finished. They're not seeing anybody's low moments. Have you had a sad moment or a time that you'd be happy to talk about or a yeah. thought? Yeah, I think I, I, I had a, I think it's, it's more like a general, two days ago was my grandma's birthday, uh, or it would have been her birthday because she died recently, which is, oh. yes, as, which is not good. Um, yeah, it's been quite hard dealing with grief, which people of my family and my partner have been doing in different ways 
at the moment and when my grandma died which was before lockdown it felt weird like it should be like the whole world should I just felt like the whole world should be upset Mm. Uh, and now that everyone is upset but obviously people are losing people to the virus and to other Mm. things um I think it can also feel like maybe some of that communal grief and weirdness eclipses what you're going through and people don't might not necessarily have time in the same way for your story of Mm. weirdness um your your personal grief because something because the whole world is grieving yeah and I think one thing that was really important to me was gonna to be go to Ghana to have her to to go to her funeral which would have been like a massive affair obviously Mm -hmm. not happening uh might be happening in July but I do not know if I would be able to fly in July um and I think something that has helped me through that thinking that I might not be able to be there for the funeral I might not be able to gather is thinking about like the presence of that person's in my life outside of that like the things that they said and the photographs and the stuff that I can have now rather than looking for some I think in a lot of ways people are looking for some closure or some date Mm -hmm. which is why they're eking out the lockdown dates but like rather than looking for like one thing to ease your grief or ease your pain it's just like lots of little things that make you feel make you feel better or close to that person or you Mm -hmm. know part of that group or in that situation so yeah. Yeah. Steve was talking about in his, um, he did a, uh, a letter for Tortoise Media. They're doing these monologues and letters and he's been, he wrote another brilliant thing for GQ magazine as well. Steve Alley, who you do Grown Up Land with. Um, brilliant Grown Up Land, which everyone should listen to, especially the lockdown episode. It's so good. Oh. Um, but Steve was talking in that about, uh, in the Tortoise one that it might be out today or next week, um, that uh, about closure and how people aren't getting closure now. And it's like how refugees don't get closure like it's not it's not the biggest thing so it's not the most you never think about that with a refugee you just think oh they've lost their home oh they're looking for a a new state because and that's that's because it's not legal for them to live live anywhere that they can live um that's the top line but actually of course they didn't get their last day at school either they didn't or, or their last day at uni they didn't get to grieve their friend who they lost in the war they didn't get to go to the funeral and so he's talking about how in that piece about things that you specifically about this about people not being able to go to memorials or or um going to funerals on zoom that kind of thing um not having your last day at school he's talking about ways of creating closure for yourself and and how you you sort of have to do it yourself because that it isn't going to be you know we're just so human beings are so good at going this is the ceremony we have to say goodbye to this and to say hello to the new chapter And it's, you know, funerals are for the living, they're not for the dead. And it's important to still find a way to process that. Yeah. No, I think that's, yeah, I think that's really, really true. It's like you have to find, or like, and in some ways, maybe it's better to find your own way of saying goodbye to that thing, which is a process. Like, I know that if I'd gone or been able to go, it wouldn't have magically been like, well, everything's fine. No. (laughs) Yes, of (laughs) course not. I think now thinking intentionally about those things and being like, you can still, you don't have to be subject to like someone else's schedule. You can like set your own beginnings and endings and processes Mm. and stuff. So, but we might have to do them with writing something down or um, a very close friend of mine had uh, a death in the family and we had a sort of, uh, I mean, I don't want to sound flippant at all because it wasn't, but we had a house party where we asked her to tell us stories about him and we had, Oh, we toasted lovely. him and, you know, uh, and and just to sort of create some kind of here is the end of this chapter, you know, and it's not obviously it's not going to do for someone what all of the regular things would do. But like, what can we do? Like, I think we're very human beings are very innovative. And that's what Steve talks about in his articles about the refugee, about the parallels between being a refugee in this situation. And those parallels include how do you create for yourself markers of time or or um closure for really important events um i'm so sorry about your grandmother that must be really hard yeah but she was amazing she lived like she was she would have been 96 so yeah we had a long happy life long happy life i went to her 90th birthday party and there were 500 people there and it was like a massive oh that's so lovely it's so great you did that while she was alive yeah yeah (laughs) you've always got that to look on whether or not you know you get to go to her funeral or whether you have to do that in more of a localized joined up way but i hope you do get to do it 
I mean, you could always do it in a year's time. You know, there's always ways. Yeah, and I'm there'll sure always you will. be ways, and there's always things. I think afterwards, I, I kind of, I was still gigging, so I was like, got to do stuff. But then, like the next day after the gig, when there was no more gig, I sort of sat in the dark in my room, and like didn't really want to speak to my family, and was like, I'd recorded like a little interview with her, like a little chat with her, the last time I was there, and I was just watching that, and then I got a call from my auntie, which I had to pick up because your aunties will always find you. <laughs> <laughs> will always find you and like my yeah my family is just nuts it was just like bonkers lots of energy from down the phone and I was like oh she's like given us all of this and like we all feel the same way about her and like everything that was important about that place hasn't disappeared just because she's gone yeah that's yeah. that's that's really wonderful and thank you for sharing that with us mm -hmm. do you have a piece of online feminism you'd like us to do today uh, is there a cause a project uh, a petition we can sign somewhere we can donate to, or, or if we can't donate to uh, um, Amplify in some way. Oh, um, can I do two just that are in my head? You know, you can, because we, we, we are not restricted <laughs> on this show. <laughs> just go for it, do two. Um, so, well, it's two causes. So I started uh, doing little seminars on how to take better nudes, but not for money or anything, just to support two charities. And the ones that, I've done so far are lesbians and gays support the migrants uh, and they're a charity that has a particular fund at the moment to protect vulnerable people because of covid and if you've seen pride that used to be lesbians and gays support the minors and that's why it's called lesbians and gays support the migrants oh i did not know that and i need to watch i know, I know someone who's an extra in pride so that's yeah that's if you've not seen pride please watch it tonight like it's oh, well, such a beautiful film after i love it it's funny, it's warm, it's charming. I cried so much when I saw it in the cinema. Okay, I will- I, I cry every time my, I see it. Add that to my list. And also uh, there's a sex worker led uh, hardship fund, which I think is on Twitter at least at Sex Work Hive. And that's also setting up a, a hardship fund for vulnerable people who are in sex work. Um, yeah, and it's like, cause right. it's a grassroots, it's an advocacy organization and cause it's a grassroots sex worker led thing. I'm like, that is a good thing to support. Phenomenal. Could you make little stories of both of those and at The Guilty Feminist and we'll share them here. And if you do a swipe up link, we can also add that um, at our end so that people, it's easy for people to donate. If you can't donate, please share, spread, follow, retweet, regram, do any of those things because lots of people have got more expendable income than they know what to do with at the moment because there's nowhere to spend their money. Um, do you have any has any renewed hope for humanity come out of this whole thing? And do, do you have any hope for you that humanity will learn from this? And if so, how? I think it will be hard to change. I think we obviously do have an opportunity to change things for the better, but because so many people will be like, my job, my everything's mixed up, it will be harder to be organized and we'll have to have a lot of patience and it will take a long time. I think that, I think that people always surprise you. I think that there's a lot of, a lot of me not being able to go on my local Facebook group because people are like, there's so much conflict. People are scared. They don't know what to do. They're criticizing people for taking their kids out to see the teddy bears in the windows or people for making journeys they don't think are essential. And there's lots of that, but there's also people being like looking for like Arabic speakers to kind of help people who are vulnerable and have to stay at home. And I went for a run and someone told me like in a lovely way, oh, like we're all running on the left because like just mm -hmm. to make it easier. And loads of people are doing really quiet, nice things. People are really like gentle and uh, affectionate to people in shops and stuff. And everyone knows, I think, I think that sort of sense of empathy and you understand why someone might be a bit more frazzled or even rude to you potentially without noticing. I think there's a lot of, I think there's a lot of empathy from people I wouldn't necessarily expect. And when I'm yeah, getting overwhelmed by like different news stories and misinformation, it's easy to be like, oh, this is too stressful and people are being mean, but people are also being really great. So. Uh, so, uh, so your hope is that that empathy will extend. I have that hope too. Yeah. I think it is going to teach people some empathy. I think it's going to teach people empathy for people who've been through war yeah. and famine and disasters in their lifetime although this is not anywhere approaching that and it really isn't um there are as steve says in his articles parallels and it makes us realize something could happen to us yes like, for sure. oh this I is think... happening to us you know and of course some people are leaving losing people to COVID, and that is as, as 
devastating as losing people in any other way. You know, it's not, it, it, it's and not to minimise that either, but I hope it will give people much greater empathy for refugees and other people who, who've, who are trying to rebuild their lives. Yeah. Yeah. Any habits you think we'll take through? Do you think we'll still be house partying on a Wednesday night with oh. our mates abroad? Uh, no, nah. I mean, house, I'm not a fan of house party, not because of anything sinister, but I'm just like, you could go into any room. That's terrible. Well, you can lock the room. Lock the room, Sophie Duke. Lock, lock the, the room. room. But, but, yeah, I, then... I, I, but, but on the other hand, don't lock the room because I might want to pop by. I might want to pop in. I guess, I guess just don't uh, have I mean, a if you're nude in the room, obviously lock it. If you're, if you're... <laughs> If you're just wearing the pink cowboy hat and nothing else, I'd lock the room. Um, I mean, I, <laughs> I have, um, I've not, done, I've not been nude in a room. I've not been nude in a room. But I, I did put on. I was. I, I went. I pants. got in the bath on one of them. I got in the bath on one with Raven Smith and four women I didn't know. Oh, I, I did it discreetly. No, I, I think it's, I followed I think it's the a lovely rule. thing. I think it's like being able to take people into that place is a lovely thing. I, I was, I put this on these mm. dungarees because i was like i don't think i can i know that i can see you in my pants although i don't think it's happened yet but i was like i'm not sure i want to inflict that on everyone else and sure. also i was like i'm not going to put on a bra for a feminist no the live but i also don't want the girls to be permanently a, to attention so this is that's a, a, that's a different sort of nip rule different sort of nip rule that's <laughs> a good the dungaree is a great leveler yeah. <laughs> much like <laughs> that is a great quote the dungaree is a great leveler uh hannah if you're watching and you would like to do an extra t-shirt the dungaree is a great leveler it's just a thought um and and finally is there any uh is that what's and finally what is the thing that you are most looking forward to doing after this so if someone said quarantine's over go and do a thing what would you do oh my god um I think, I mean, I don't want to say sex because it doesn't make me sound deep, but I do want to absolutely <laughs> press well, the basis. it might say. make you sound deep. It depends how deep the sex goes. Oh, yeah, it's, uh, it's very shallow. Don't worry, it's very, very shallow. <laughs> um, but I think, I think that kind of, I think with, I have certain loved ones, obviously my partner that I'm away from and I really want to hold them. My mum, I really want to be close to. So I think like just lots of very uncomfortable pressing um but i want to i just thought i want to go to the theater and i know that's something that certain theaters made available i think watching live stuff it's mm. really cheesy but it's kind of reminded me why i do comedy just thinking about being at a gig and like, mm. all like being, just being at a gig or being oh. at a play, like people laughing people together people getting to go on stage yeah, getting to watch just, other people that, i didn't yeah. appreciate it enough yeah, I just, yeah, I want to go and watch something. I want to be somewhere where someone watch something and someone playing some music, someone telling jokes. Um, yeah, so Bring just... Bring it back and we promise to appreciate it. Yeah. <sighs> we I'll will. never complain again. Yeah. And what do you have to plug that we can watch you doing? We can listen to you on Grown Up Land on BBC Sounds. You can listen to me on Grown Up Land. Listen to Grown Up Land. The new series is so good. And they're it's only... so good, right? Mm. Ah, the guests, wonderful. Well, I think the latest one... Ellen Jones, wonderful. The one you talked about, lockdown episode, brilliant. Um, so please listen to Grown Up Land. Uh, you can follow me. Obviously, you can see my handle. Um, at Sophie Duke things, Box. At Sophie Duke Box. I made a little radio documentary about polyamory, which is about 25 minutes long, which you can listen to on the BBC also. Nice. And um, tomorrow is my next nude seminar. So if you follow me, you can watch me doing a seminar on how to take good nudes at 6pm tomorrow. I look forward to that where will it be oh and i'm definitely tagging deborah in in my nudes challenge so i consider me tagged yeah uh, but i will need some seriously good lighting can i do a bath one because i did that i've done a few things in the bath now i i got in in the bath on house party which is what made me think of reading raven smith's book in the bath because he he was i i read a bit of his book and then other people reading book it was the thing called i'm um, doing lines with raven smith and you read a bit of his book because he couldn't have a book launch or anything, you know, what it's like bringing out a book in this climate. So then I did doing lines in the bath with Raven Smith. And then I made a video for another friend in the bath because it was, I was meant to make a funny video for her. So I reckon I could do a bath nude. Bath nude is amazing. Also because that's like one of the hot tips. Like if you're sudsy, that's very sexy. And also like, the lighting will probably be softer. 
like also after exercise but then some people tend to be red of face and also but like oh a, a bath a bath nude is creme de la creme tom, well tom has taken now two videos of me in the bath but he's quite prudish he goes oh it's showing a bit i'll crop, crop you closer and i'm like it's fine it's fine i'll just put s bubbles there I've run out of bubble bath doing those. I need I need to get some more bubble bath in because I've got bath oil, but that's not going to do the same thing. Um, someone's saying, shut up, Debs. You know it's sexy. I, I would think suds, less suds up your arms. I did have suds on my arms, but I didn't think it was particularly sexy. But I mean, the bath is sexy. If you have a suds beard as well, that's very... No, it isn't. No. <laughs> no. no. You, little... you are misleading me. <laughs> you are misleading me. No, suds, you are misleading suds me. steam, sweat. Mwah. A little bit, yeah. I'll get him to bring a kettle in, get some steam going. <laughs> this is going to be sort of high production bath nude. You I'm going to do my makeup for. No. You don't need high production. I got him to do the videos that he did. I got him to do, in, uh, he did them in black and white. And the funny video I did for a friend that was just for her, he put on some sort of 1920s music underneath and made sort of funny titles and stuff. And that covers a multitude of sins. So maybe I'll do a black and white. Oh, like a noir nude. Mm, a noir bath nude. Nude. I'm I'm delighted. I genuinely, I think I've a lot of friends now. I feel like Otis and Sex Education have been like, this guy wants me to send him a nude, but I'm not. And also, you don't have to send anyone nudes. Obviously, you don't have to send any pictures of yourself. Don't do anything you're not comfortable with. Good you note. Thank you. Thank you. Because I was under the impression if you tagged me, I was oh, you absolutely have to do obliged. It. But it, it doesn't apply. Oh. To oh, I see. <laughs> Others don't have to. I get it everyone I else <laughs> i see okay but, um well look is there anywhere else we should see you other than your nudes and following your sophie jukebox probably all the details are there yeah all the details are there follow sophie jukebox real name sophie juker um and look out for her t-shirt next week we've got some incredible guests we've got yasmin abdel majid <sighs> we've got uh who else is coming on next week um oh scarlet curtis oh my Very god excitingly i know um, I'm just trying to think who else is coming on. But uh, oh, various dairy girls. I haven't. I was chatting to them the other night, and they've basically said put us in any time. But I haven't confirmed the dates with them yet. But various dairy girls. Um, so look out for the new normal next week, 6 p.m. Um, every night, right here. And I'm doing extra episodes occasionally with activists and other people um, on at DF Dubs because these always stay up for 24 hours so as not to disrupt this feed but all of the older episodes are archived on YouTube by older I do mean you know three weeks old um, Sophie Dukas will be archived on YouTube and it will also be out in a podcast form if you buy her t-shirt uh, she will get all the profits because the merch sh store aren't taking any um, so please buy it because look at her she's sitting there in a, the only pair of dungarees she owns not able to gig <laughs> Um, she's yeah. desperate for your tw for your for your t-shirt money. Um, sorry, I'm just popping my. This is how we make television. Now. I'm just popping my cocktail down. Uh, Sophie, you've been a fantastic guest. Thank you so much. We hope you come on again in another couple of weeks when your answers might be different and they might be more like you might be fully nude all of the time by that point. We don't know what we're going to be like in a month. I mean, definitely less clothes. This has been such a joy. Thank you so much. It's so nice. Me. Thank you so much. Love you loads. Love you. Bye. Do I do I go? I think I go. Yes. 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 Please.